Stay connected, stay informed with the Northwest's only all news station, Northwest News Radio. Good morning, it is 702. Welcome to the first day of August. It's 67 degrees at Boeing Field right now under cloudy skies. Along with Greg Herschel, I'm Matt DeFactor, and here's what's happening. Federal regulators say they're going to restore Boeing's right to deliver new 787 Dreamliners after a year of wrangling over quality control. We get the update from Corwin Hake. The cautious optimism Boeing chief executive Dave Calhoun expressed last week turns out to have been fully justified. Now we are at the detailed moment to get ready for 787 deliveries, the moment we've been waiting for and uh, we look and feel as though we're on the verge of doing so. The Federal Aviation Administration notified Boeing on Friday it will approve the company's process for inspecting and manufacturing 787s, clearing the way for stalled deliveries to resume. For Boeing, the importance of this clearance can hardly be overstated. The company has a stockpile of about 120 undelivered 787s. At a conservative cost of $200 million each, those deliveries are worth $2.4 billion, money Boeing is counting on to become, as the company puts it, cash positive for the year. Corwin Hake, Northwest News Radio. A local Boeing contractor is closing up shop and laying off workers. Imaginetics has been an Auburn-based sheet metal manufacturer providing parts or services for Boeing planes, including the 737, the 787, and the 777. But the Puget Sound Business Journal reports Imaginetics is closing its Washington operations and is laying off 83 employees immediately. In an effort to prevent people living in RVs from parking homes and uh, businesses. Some people in Seattle have resorted to using large, heavy blocks in those parking spaces. It's against the law, but as Brian Calvert reports from Georgetown, the law doesn't appear to be enforced evenly. A significant amount of parking here in this neighborhood is being taken up by large three-by-six-foot concrete blocks, each weighing over a ton. Many were placed while the city was not enforcing its 72-hour parking rule, and the blocks were meant to discourage those living in RVs from using the spot for weeks on end. Enforcement of the 72-hour parking rule has resumed and now advocates for those who are homeless would like to see the city also enforce the law that discourages citizens from placing these blocks in parking spaces. Bill Kierlin Hackett, a director of the Interfaith Task Force on Homelessness, tells the Times, quote, we just find it to be quite hypocritical. The Seattle Department of Transportation says it is enforcing the law against placing the blocks but claims it just takes time to figure out exactly who's responsible for putting them there. In Georgetown, Brian Calvert, Northwest News Radio. It's 7.04 and coming up. While we get some relief from super hot temperatures, it will be another day close to 100 in Spokane. And it is tough for the homeless. I'm Carlene Johnson. 7.04, and it's time to check the drive once again with Kiara Jordan and the Dubin Law Group Traffic Center. Well, it looks like we have a new blocking problem in Des Moines. This is going to be uh, some sort of aid response that is blocking our ramp from State Route 99 to westbound 518. And I just took a peek at the camera shot. It doesn't look like we're able to squeak by, so you won't be able to use that ramp right now. Northbound I-5 with some lighter slowing through Nisqually. Coming out of the Fife Curve, it's a heavy drive to State Route 18. And then out of the north end of Federal Way, we are quite busy. We'll be sticking with this slowing into the SeaTac area. And then in Seattle, we've been slow from about mid-Boeing Field, much the way to toward Mercer. Northbound 509, about a mile back up, approaching the First Avenue South Bridge. Southbound 167 is now getting slowed down between 512 and Meridian. On northbound 167, it's brakelets from Highway 410 into Pacific. From 15th Street Southwest to about 15th Street Northwest, uh, some crowding as we're approaching 84th and then slow and go between 212th and 405. Heavy on northbound 405 through Renton. Lighter slowing in Newcastle, now starting to build into downtown Bellevue. Southbound 405, brakelets come on as you pull away from I-5. They stick with you through Canyon Park. Southbound I-5, a little bit of crowding as you're approaching 128th in Everett. A fairly heavy commute at this point from the 405 split into Shoreline. Our next Northwest traffic app, 714. Our report this time is sponsored by Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Electrical. Call Beacon today and save $50 on all electrical work. Come just call 1-800-FREAKIN and stop freaking. Call Beacon. Now the forecast from the 1530mortgage.com Weather Center with meteorologist Kristen Clark. Unlike previous heat waves for western Washington, the come to an end in dramatic fashion with temperatures that lower 24 degrees within 24 hours. This heat wave actually comes to a gradual finish. Temperatures today low to mid 80s across Puget Sound, so still quite warm this afternoon, but as a stronger onshore breeze develops tonight, that'll help to really knock the temperatures down into the 70s. Starting on Tuesday, waking up to a shallow marine layer of clouds.
cloud cover and maybe some drizzle if we're lucky out there for the morning commute. In the Comal 4 Weather Center, meteorologist Kristen Clark. And right now in Seattle, 67 degrees. Getting a break from the intense heat today, but not in Spokane, where it will be another 100 degree day. For the homeless trying to find a way to cool down during this heat wave has been a struggle. We hear about it from Carlene Johnson. Bill Taylor is the homeless ministry director at Sandpoint Adventist Church. His team comes every month to feed people staying at Camp Hope near I-90, but over the weekend they made an extra visit because of the heat. We know that it's hot, we know people are suffering, and it's not a good thing. KXLY TV reports there are about 600 people living in tents and vehicles in that camp. Meantime in Portland, a high of 90 is expected today, so cooler than it has been. Some people without air conditioning sought relief at a North Portland cooling center through the weekend, but with temps forecast to drop back down, the county closed that facility last night, and some people were not happy about that. I think Multnomah County is wrong, wrong, wrong that they opened it as late as they did. They should have opened it the day before. Oregon reports at least 10 heat-related deaths since the start of this heat wave about a week ago. Carlene Johnson, Northwest News Radio. Well, the Pierce County Sheriff's Office is issuing another reminder about being careful if you're out on the open water. Sergeant Darren Moss tells Como 4 you should never be out there alone. If you're just swimming in the lake as well, or swimming in one of our rivers, um, have a plan of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. He says always wear a life jacket. A 69-year-old man drowned Friday while trying to fix a boat propeller at Spanaway Lake Park. A dive team recovered his body on Saturday. Washington's primary election is tomorrow, and some district boundaries have changed since the last election. Kendall Hudson is the chief of staff in the King County Elections Office. He tells Como 4 this happens every 10 years after the census. So that'll be congressional districts, state legislative districts, sometimes even that city council level will do redistricting. Also this year, 17-year-olds are allowed to vote in the primary if they're going to turn 18 by the general election in November. Demonstrators showed up outside the Grace Harbor County Jail yesterday. Where is Oakley? Where is Oakley? They're referring to five-year-old Oakley Carlson, who was reported missing last year. They believe her father, Andrew Carlson, who's locked up in that jail, knows the answer. The little girl's former foster mother helped organize the rally. Really, we just wanted to meet outside of the jail to kind of let Andrew know that we haven't forgotten and that there's going to be a lot of outside pressure on him. Carlson's been serving a one-year sentence after pleading guilty in a negligence case linked to his other children. He could be released sometime this month. Starbucks is being criticized by some of its own employees who claim that the company just closed six stores here in the Seattle area as a way to fight unionization efforts. More from Como Force Michelle Esteban. Starbucks has shut down 16 stores nationwide. They're citing crime and safety concerns as a reason for the closure. Six of those are right here locally. One in Everett and five in Seattle. Here's a look at those locations that closed their doors, including the Central District, Westlake Center, Capitol Hill, Roosevelt, and Union Station. Last week, we looked up property crimes. We were curious and violent crimes on the blocks where those stores are located. And we didn't see a noticeable upward trend at most locations, but the company says not all of the issues employees are seeing get reported. I was honestly insulted that they would say that this is about worker concerns, have workers say, no, we're not concerned, actually, and then be told, no, you are concerned. That's why we're closing. End of discussion. At least two of the six stores closing are unionized, but the Starbucks told us any claims of union busting are false, saying the 16 stores closing nationwide include union as well as non-union stores. It's now 710. It's time to get to the Beacon Plumbing Sports Desk. Eric Heinz is in for Tom Hutler. The Mariners fell to the Astros 3-2 in 10 innings in Houston Sunday. The M's lose three of four games in the series. Now they visit the AL East leading New York Yankees at 4.05 this afternoon, sending left-hander Marco Gonzalez to the mound. Outfielder Julio Rodriguez was put on the 10-day injured list on Sunday after X-ray results on his right hand came back negative. Newly acquired pitcher Luis Castillo is set to make his debut on Wednesday against the Yanks. NBA legend and Mercer Island resident Bill Russell passed away on Sunday at age 88. Storm guard Sue Bird says Russell was a major influence on pro athletes speaking on important social issues. I really started the idea of, of athlete activist. Um, so he did it with his play on the court, but even more importantly, his work off the court. And I think we all have looked to him as a role model, as an inspiration on, on how to conduct ourselves in that way. 
Besides leading the Celtics to 11 titles in 13 years, Russell also marched for civil rights with Martin Luther King Jr. and stood with boxer Muhammad Ali when he refused military induction during the Vietnam War. Pac-12 Commissioner George Klyovkov says his conference is far from being finished despite defections of USC and UCLA. He confirmed during Pac-12 Media Day that the conference is actively exploring expansion. Sports attend at 40 minutes past the hour. America Heights Northwest News Radio. It's 712. Congressional Democrats are racing to pass a climate and health care bill, they hope, before the August recess. More from ABC's Rachel Scott. It is down to the wire for Senate Democrats now scrambling to get this economic bill passed before they leave town for August recess on Friday. If they pull it off, it would be the largest investment in climate in U.S. history, putting $369 billion toward climate and energy initiatives, including tax credits for buying electric vehicles. A major investment in health care to lower premiums for Americans buying their own health insurance, and it would also lower the cost of medication for seniors. All of this would be paid for by increasing taxes on big corporations and the wealthy. It is unclear if Democrats have the votes they need to get it passed. They need the support of all 50 Senate Democrats, and right now there's still one big holdout. Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona has not indicated if she plans to vote yes. The Inflation Reduction Act, Democrats argue that it puts billions of dollars toward tackling the deficit, that it would help reduce inflation, but one outside analysis shows that it would slightly increase inflation until 2024 before bringing it back down. The first grain ship to leave Ukraine since the start of the war has departed from Odessa. We'll get more from ABC's Ian Panel. It's a high-risk journey. The Rizzoni's being guided through heavily mined waters loaded with 26,000 tons of corn. It's hoped the shipments will start to ease a global hunger crisis made worse by the war. The entire Ukrainian coastline under a Russian blockade since the start of the war. Russia displaying its strength at sea. Speaking at the country's Navy Day Parade Sunday, Putin announcing the deployment of hypersonic missiles in the coming months. Saying these systems have no equal in the world, for which there are no barriers. And Putin signing a new naval doctrine, increasing Russia's military presence, citing as major security threats what it calls the United States' goal of dominance in the world ocean and NATO's mounting activity. This as the fighting in the south of Ukraine intensifies. As Ukraine mounts a counteroffensive to take back the Russian-held city of Kherson, reports now that Russia's moving a large number of troops from the east to the south, and Russian missiles pummeling the nearby southern city of Mykolaiv, causing widespread devastation. <laughs> President Zelensky calling it one of the most brutal shellings of Mykolaiv and the region over the entire period of the full-scale war. Ukrainian officials saying the attacks consisted of at least 12 missiles, destroying numerous buildings, including including the home of a Ukrainian grain magnate and his wife, killing them both as grain shipments finally get going again. Well, this movement of Russian troops from the east to the south seems a response to this Ukrainian counter-offensive. I think it's fair to say that if a month ago the momentum appeared with Russia, today that seems to have ended. It's 714. We check traffic and weather every 10 minutes on the fours, and from the Dubin Law Group Traffic Center, here's Kiara Jordan. Well, working with a fire right now in the Des Moines area, and this is going to be fully blocking our westbound State Route 518 off-ramp to Tukwila International Boulevard. So unable to get through there, throwing a little bit of a wrench in your travel plans. I'm not seeing too much crowding through the area right now, though. Southbound I-5, that is a very heavy commute from the 405 split all the way through Shoreline. On northbound I-5, we're looking busy out of the 5 curve to State Route 18, out of the north end of Federal Way to State Route 516. We'll find some lighter slowing around the SeaTac area, and then a busy drive in Seattle starting toward the south end of Boeing Field and following you much of the way to Mercer. Northbound 99 has been slow around the First Avenue South Bridge. On northbound 167, it's off and on slowing out of Sumner into Pacific, breaking free just north of Jovita. And we're going to be slow and go again from State Route 18 much of the way to 84th. Not solid that entire stretch, but it's definitely a busy drive. And then about a mile back up in Renton as we approach 405. Northbound 405 has been struggling through the Renton area and southbound 405 very busy out of Alderwood through Canyon Park and also getting stacked up as you're approaching 160th. Our next Northwest traffic app, 724. Our report this time is sponsored by Clipper Vacations. Get away this summer with Clipper Vacations to Victoria, B.C. Enjoy Clipper round trip plus one night hotel from only $256. Kids have price at ClipperVacations.com.
Well, some parts of central Washington have been getting a few warm showers this morning. Ellensburg, for example, 80 degrees, but they have had a few sprinkles coming through. Also, uh, uh, just south of Wenatchee and around Lake Chelan. Our forecast here for western Washington from the 1530mortgage.com weather center, sunny and cooler. High about 82, no more mid-90s for a while around here. Gradual clearing tomorrow by afternoon, a high of 78, mostly sunny Wednesday with the high around 78. It's mostly cloudy in Seattle. Seeing some, some peaks of sunshine. It's uh, 66 degrees. Stay connected. Stay informed. This is Northwest News Radio 1000 FM 977. 717 right now. Greg Herschel and Manda Factor here along with Frank Lenzi at the editor's desk. The House Speaker is expected in Taiwan sometime this week. And that's according to CNN which cited a senior Taiwanese government official and a U.S. official. Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan would come despite multiple warnings from China and also from the Biden administration. The death toll from the flooding in eastern Kentucky has now reached 30, and the fear is it will only continue to rise. Governor Andy Beshear is saying that the majority of the deaths occurred in one county, and there are still hundreds of people missing. 15 in Knott County, four of them children. And it says minors, they are children. The oldest one is in second grade. We get more from ABC's Eva Pilgrim. Homes and businesses washed away, hundreds now living in shelters, making things difficult the size of the impacted area. This storm, just the latest to devastate the area over the last several months. Teams of rescuers searching approximately 24 square miles, canine units looking for survivors in mountains of debris. We're seeing everything you can imagine, the remains of people's lives everywhere down mm -hmm. this creek, baby shoes and fourth grade pictures. This complicating the search, trained dogs picking up on even the smallest scent. There's human scent in the water because Others have drowned and been pushed through the water. Mm -hmm. There's human scent over everything that was in a home. Among the stories of survival, the 17-year-old girl and her dog sitting on a roof after their home flooded. And with more than 1,000 rescues this weekend alone, authorities here are stepping up efforts as dozens remain missing. This is what we do in Kentucky. We take care of one another. This terrain is difficult on a good day. The governor saying they will likely be searching for bodies for weeks. In California, evacuation orders are in place for about 2,000 people as the McKinney fire is still burning out of control near the Oregon border. Here's ABC's Matt Gutman. The McKinney fire went from charring just several hundred acres on Friday to torching more than 52,000 acres on Sunday, destroying over 100 structures and killing at least two people. We spoke to the sheriff early this morning. My understanding is it's still 0% containment. Uh, last night, primarily, we spent um, you know trying to develop plans for today, which includes going out and trying to do an assessment of the damage the best we can. And we're also trying to look for any obvious deceased persons in the burn area. Residents in more than 100 homes ordered evacuated as the fire threatened to cut off escape routes. Search and rescue crews rushing to rescue dozens of hikers along the Pacific Crest Trail over the weekend. Smoke began to reduce visibility levels to just 20 feet. It was pretty scary uh, driving through the fire. You could see uh, on the highway by the interstate, um, basically pitch black. Looked like midnight when it was, you know, sunset. Many homes reduced to ash. In some cases, all that remained was a mailbox on the ground or a smoldering truck nearby. That fire was sparked by lightning on Friday. It's now 7.20. And that's time to get to your StockCharts.com money update. Senator Joe Manchin is defending the work done in Congress to curb inflation. We have a serious problem in inflation, and we've got to defeat it. Appearing on NBC's Meet the Press, the West Virginia Democrat said the Inflation Reduction Act would take some pressure off the U.S. economy. Manchin also said the bill won't increase taxes for the American people, despite criticism from Republicans like Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy. Much of what he says is just not true. Manchin says the bill closes a loophole for companies worth a billion dollars or more by requiring them to pay a minimum 15% corporate tax. Numbers on Wall Street a little bit mixed this morning. Dow Jones averaged down about 70 points. That's only about a quarter of a percent. And the S&P is down about a quarter of a percent. NASDAQ is up about 
12 points. That's about one-tenth of a percent. We'll get back to Kiara and check traffic and weather next, and then we'll give you a chance to win with Did You Hear? There's a new way to stay connected and stay informed with Northwest News Radio, crystal clear on your HD radio. Go to 101.5 FM HD2. Check back often and never miss a thing. This is Northwest News Radio.